Part and four, uh, we're back showing this game for I don't know how many times I've <laughs> been doing this for the years. Um, well, Paradox these days, we don't have to rush games until we really are satisfied and finished with them. And the good news is that we're pretty much happy with this and we'll be able to announce the release window on in tomorrow. So, so we'll probably have that when this, this video is up. Yep. <laughs> that will definitely be true. <laughs> uh, cool. So what have we done in the last uh, nine months since we last showed the game? Well, we've focused quite a lot on fixing bugs, uh, changing interfaces that did not work as stellar as we wanted to, and improving the AI. One of the big cool stuff is our battle plan system. Uh, we've shown a little bit of about it earlier, and I'm just creating a few things what I call armies by grouping different units together and just right clicking here I have two armies one with 33 units and one with 19 mm. you pop up here you see you have a French theater that lists all my armies this is a new th system let's just rename this one so we have a proper name for it so I can identify it um, this is mostly a UI issue so that you can track your different armies you give orders to. You can also create a new one. Uh, just gonna do this one and we'll do. But just simple stuff like uh, right click, create, have a new theater. And then I'll be able to see these different ones. Setting, I can actually set reinforcement priorities on a theater level. Okay, so what's cool with uh, battle plans? Um, if I'm going to my France, we're at the uh, risk of eventually fighting a war with Germany. So oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll take this uh, army here with the guys in the north. We'll assign them a leader, we'll give them this guy looks good. And this is a new thing what we added called garrison area. Before we had the things where you uh, could do naval invasions, you could assign front lines, putting them up to f uh, the German front here. Uh, why can't I put the front here? Oh, it's demilitarized. This is my invention of <laughs> putting another one here. Cool. Anyway, um, and then I could do a pensive line in here. So this is like how I should invade and such, such things. But I also can give the orders to these troops of uh, what we call the garrison thing. A garrison, uh, yes. I, if I give an entire or army order to garrison, I remove all the other things. I tell them, you should just guard these ones. Mm. Then you can see my armies have a small shield on them. Um, they will, if I take forward the timer, they will move the entire armies about and they will be garrison and protecting this area, making sure that nobody lands troops on vital uh, air bases or breaking through lines. I can put the other armies, I just assign them to uh, on a front line here. And I make, well, we're going to attack Italians when we go to war. As you can see, I don't have to uh, manually give orders to every unit, mm -hmm. but I just draw plans on a map. can make another them. And you can see 19 divisions are going there. We're also doing a attack like this. So and this is also going on the other side, of course, like what yeah. the AI is doing. Yeah, so, you'd, so you can, you don't know what the AI will be doing, but they will be doing the similar things, doing these plants as well as yours. Uh, another cool thing we've been doing in the last time is rebalancing how production works. Uh, instead of having everything just tied to population, you can, uh, see that different states have different types of uh, 
categories they can be and you can build them up at different approaches. Uh, just closing this one. Uh, this is my supply network. This is my states. The greener they are, the more factories you can build in them. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can't build up uh, the center of Africa too much. <laughs> Uh, also, we've been working quite a lot on the supply logics. You can see here where uh, different infrastructure and how built up they are, how many troops you can keep in each region, because if you stack too many troops, you will be basically losing mm. those. Um, another cool thing we've added is expanding the technology tree. Um, a new f folder called support companies. Support companies is what you add to your units to customize their purpose. First of all, we had three of them before. We had engineer companies, we had recon companies and military police before. But now we added quite a lot more. Uh, engineers, of course, to make sure that it's easier to cross the rivers, it's you're better to at defending with your troops. Recon is to have, take advantages in combat and making so that your units can uh, get better tactics because you know where the other one is. Military poli police is to suppress uprisings. Mm. New ones are maintenance companies. That's what you sometimes you build stuff like if you build an AK 47, they're not that prone to breaking down, but the, and they're also very, very easy to maintain. Or then you have a thing like a tiger tank, which are really, really intricate uh, machinery, but they break down. Mm. You need to, they are very heavy in, not very reliable in performance, but if you have maintenance companies, you reduce that risk. But since you only have five different slots for this, of course you can uh, add in artillery, anti-air and all those standard things, you really have to make a choice. Which support companies do I want and which? Mm. The other ones are a field hospital. With a field hospital you take less casualties, which is good if you have low manpower more people survive. You have what we call the logistics company that makes it so that you have less, uh, basically your units require less supplies because they will waste yeah. less. And finally we have the signal company that uh, makes so that your plans are better executed and you can quicker reinforce. It's the, those people that are of, used to radios and communicate a lot. So this makes for a what we call a rather interesting uh, approach to uh, customizing your units and get the strategic level on. Uh, it's a strategy game. You want to have a lot of sh choices that are meaningful, not choices just because of, uh, for the sake of having a choice, but the choice that is actually a true choice. Because they're not just one set answer to, yeah, these five are always the best five. It's depending on your uh, personal style, how you play, what your troops are needed for, what your oppo what. There's so many different factors. It's always a choice. And if you're going with the tanks, you may want to have that maintenance. Yeah, maintenance companies is good. You also want engineers because you get less penalties of crossing rivers because tanks can't swim. <laughs> I, at least most of them can't swim. I know there are some that are semi-amphibious, but... <laughs> well, actually, we should make an expansion with that. The, the swim tank edition. Well, that's, that's one for the, the little notebook. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's a cool one. Um, so... Basically, we announced the game in January 2014. Our goal was to have it out by the end of that year or at latest quarter one, 2015. Now we're about like 14, 15, 16 months later and the game is still not out. But what we've done here is not just making a sequel. We made a game that's been redesigned from the way at every single point to make a more engaging experience, to make a game that's easier to get into and a game that's truly defined in the World War II era. It will be the pinnacle of the Hot Iron franchise. Mm. Is, is it also that you now you sort of you're in the mindset that we're building a platform, we're building something that's going to last for 
five years maybe, or it may be even more. Is, is that a different mindset than sort of getting a game that's you, you push it out and then it's, it's out there and then you do a sequel a few years later? Yeah, it's a different mindset. Uh, there's two aspects of it. First of all, we want to support the game and, as you say, having a platform because then we can do a lot of expansion and keep iterating and making a better game. But it's also the thing that we have higher standards for the games we have had since we started releasing Victoria 2. It's like we have a quality standard we want to reach and games have to be on that level. But as you say, having the platform is f almost as important. Mm. All right. Cool. Are we, are we done or was there anything else you wanted to show us? Mm, I could probably talk about the game for forever but and uh, it sounds like some of the stuff is saying like uh, marketing <laughs> stuff like pinnacle of our trying gaming but well yeah it's a little bit sounds like marketing bullshit but it is the best our trying game so far all right and you can say that because you're already playing it tons and tons and tons yeah i have like 800 hours just playing the game <laughs> not, not working or anything that's just play yeah, that's playing. It includes the two hours uh, of multiplayer at office and uh, that's scheduled and so, but it's mostly playing uh, and some at the evening or some at home. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You ask, what is our aim? Victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory however long and hard the road may be. But without victory, there is no survival.